I just love film. And it's, it's, a, it's a really, really interesting conversation, man. Like I try to tell people a lot of times, sometimes God just places something on you or in you where you're like, you just feel a certain energy. And um, I never in my life thought I would be a filmmaker. I don't know, man. I just got a little bit older and I had an idea to write a film. And uh, that's why a lot of what I do is about teaching people about, you know, always having a dream. Um, it took me 13 years to really get myself going as a self-taught filmmaker. And uh, once I got the door a little bit cracked independently, I haven't stopped. And I think that's just more of like a hustler's mentality in terms of like, you go and some people stop and celebrate like, ooh, I made this movie. When they see this one, baby, it's on. And I'm like, no, nah, what if they see this and don't? like it as an African-American filmmaker. I've always been, I've always like my first couple of years questioned how come I could never point to another African-American filmmaker that has done, you know, horror, thrillers, you know what I mean, dramas. And because I'm a fan of all of them. I remember t I started out with horror and I was like, oh, I love this. But then at the same time, I've had so much, you know, darkness in my life, I also gravitate to drama. And uh, I remember asking somebody, like, man, I got this really good idea. I, I bet it'll win some awards. And someone's like, well, you can't do that. You make horror movies. And I'm like, well, that's odd. <laughs> you know, why Why can't I? And um, I decided to be, you know, the first person that could jump and blend genres. And um, I'm happy I did that, you know. But now I'm just to the point where I have really adapted a style in terms of like, I know what I want to do with the camera. I know what the story is. I know what I'm trying to deliver. I know what my message is within the storyline. And uh, we've become more of a, a very creative uh, niche factory. We don't have a lot of money ever. <laughs> um, time is of the essence. I'm, I think we shot um, The Intruder in less than five weeks. There were times with Joseph and uh, Dennis Quay was moving tables and moving lights and let me fix my makeup for myself. And it's just that type of thing, man. It's more, it's really like super indie style, um, but but with an edge, you know, with the, with an idea of what we have to do. You need somebody who is going to lead the team and is the, it really everything happens from the top. Everything bleeds down from the top. And Dion being on the top really facilitates an environment where creativity is electric. And let's do this, let's do that. He's a constant machine, constantly moving forward. He doesn't get hung up on anything. If there's something happening behind the scenes, he tries to protect the actors from, hey, look, that's got nothing to do with these guys. <laughs> we're, 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 let's, let's keep on that's keeping right. on. Yeah. And always remains positive, regardless of the time, regardless of the last film of the sh of last scene filmed of the entire movie was the first scene that's right, up yeah. in it and we played basically played <laughs> yeah, uh, uh dusk for dawn and it was just we had so we had we, uh, uh omar joseph the uh, second unit director basically said we had three minutes until it was like this outside and we were just like we had one and then the next one he was just like you cannot miss this mark joe and i'm just like all right yeah but it was still just this sense of pride and joy and we we're gonna finish this. So it's a really, it's a team is only a team if a team has a leader. And uh, Dion was just a great leader and a joy to work for.